Okay. Let me see here. Are we recording? Yes. And let me now go over and um, uh, start this as well. There we go. Start the uh, Facebook Live. Come on. There we go. All right. Got it. We're okay. We're ready to go. Hello, everybody. It's kind of a sloppy opening, but we, we this is a cut and paste show. We don't we don't bring on the big theme songs and things like that and videos and whatever. And uh, so uh, that's why we do this very simply, very simply. Got a lot of people waiting right now. So I would just launch into them. Is there anybody here that I don't trust? No, no, I all those people I trust. OK, so we will admit all of them and see what happens here. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, here we Oh, wow. Look at you. Uh, there's a, everybody's here, uh, including, let's see, I got a Marjorie Miller as well. Oh, we got uh, Mandy and Ryan. Hello, Mandy. Hello. Oh, hello. And uh, of course, uh, 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 our old friend, Andrew Deutsch. Hey, hey. Hello, Andrew. Hello. 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 Charlene Solis. And to, hello. Uh, of course, to Mike Chisholm. And to Paul Levin, hey, everybody. Paula. And hello, Len. And hello, uh, Jeff Stein and Marjorie Miller. And Charlie Wallace should be with us momentarily. And then, of course, we always have to have a hello from Edward Berger. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's his only job on the show. I know. That's right. Well, someone has to do it. Right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Uh no I uh, uh uh we uh we just got rid of a cat here finally. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, you miss it? You want, want to tell what went on, Marjorie? You're better at storytelling. They Alex. came. They came to pick up their cat. Okay, and I'm I'm happy when they come to pick up the cat and the cat's still alive. I figure I've done. But my we job. love this cat. Yeah, we love this cat. There's well, there's a lot not to love, but you know, mm. there's something about her that is so fun. She's not a sweet cat. I wouldn't call her a sweet cat. Oh, I would. Would you really? Yeah, when she calls up around your leg and wants to be petted. No, 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 no. Well, here's what she wanted to do. Okay, Marjorie is the one in the house who feeds her, and she'd been given the ultimatum by the owner of the cat: only feed the cat twice a day, uh, once in the morning. And then you pick up the bowl after she's eaten it. And then you put down another bowl at six o'clock at night. And then you pull that one up, right? Mm -hmm. uh, at what, eight o'clock, something like that? Yeah, you're leaving me chat about So needless minutes. to say, cats don't like to be put on a schedule for eating. <laughs> yeah, because you can't, well, cats aren't like dogs. They don't go and binge, okay? Get, you put down a plate of food for dogs and it's gone. Cats, they go over and they have a little snicker snack, then they have it a little bit later and a little bit later, and you know, whatever. What you don't count on is a cat who never gets up on the bed to hang out with you. But all of a sudden, about three nights ago, I looked down at the end of the bed and the cat is there. And she said, Why? Because she wanted food. Well, it, let me finish the story. You, you see, you told me to tell the story because I tell it better, and then you ruined my timing. That's true. You're right. Yeah. But anyway, so um, I I go back to sleep. I'm happy that the cat's on the bed for a change, you know, part of the family. It's always nice. Part nice thing about a cat is when you have one on the bed with you and they're nuzzled up to you and so on, right? Not that she does much nuzzling. But all of a sudden, she's walking all over the bed. Heavy footed, boom, 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 boom. Then she's going over to Marjorie and she's what? Making biscuits on your toes? On my yeah. toes. Yeah. And and the cat just woke us up at 4.30 in the morning. And, and Marjorie, come back in a few hours. Marjorie went back to sleep. I <laughs> thought I thought the cat was so cute being on the bed and trouncing around. Finally, the cat is now sleeping on my chest. Yeah. You know? And I'm going, well, okay. So so I finally, we I she gets up. And then the cat has nothing to do with me. Because <laughs> she knows where the cat, cat food is. And she knows how to fill up the cat food for her. So that was happening. Well, today, they come to pick up their cat. 
Now, the cat has all these hiding places in the house, but she's been here so many times now. I know every one of we them. We know them. Right? We know them. I, I can make a video out of them. She stops here, and then she goes there, and then she'll stop there, and then she'll hang and we keep there. the doors to her little hiding places. We keep them open so and, she can get in there. And, and Jeff and his, and his lady were over yesterday. Uh, and we wanted her, them to see the cat, but of course the cat was nowhere to be seen. No. Okay. So now he doesn't have a, he doesn't really have a cat. Yeah, we <laughs> have, yeah, yeah. He doesn't have right. You wouldn't you wouldn't think it's I an have. emotional. Uh, so, so they come to pick up their cat today, and the cat is nowhere to be found. <laughs> right. Nowhere. Come on, it's your mommy. It's your daddy. Don't you an want an hour and a half? Did it take it wow. out? Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the cat, you, I know every hiding place that cat has in this house. There's that place, and there's that place, and there's that place. And if she isn't here, she's there. You know, she's, and cats are creatures of, uh, of um, uh, habit. habit. Couldn't find her anywhere. <laughs> she found a new place to hide. And we never was, thought of. It was a place where you, if you saw it here, you couldn't see her because she was behind someplace just scrunched in. Well, the people are going crazy. Like we lost their cat. <laughs> you know, and we didn't lose their cat. My their cat lost tears us. Coming down her eyes. Huh? The, the child, yeah, tears coming down her eyes. Why? I have no idea. The cat had to be somewhere in the house. Well, I agree, but she's thinking the worst. And it was her <laughs> goddamn spoiled cat doing it. Don't blame <laughs> us. Yeah. So the last hour or so before the show was chasing, looking for this cat all over the house. And then we thought she went to the roof, and oh my God, what if she went over the roof and she's dead maybe on the she, street? Maybe she maybe maybe she left for, for Florida. We don't know what the cat. <laughs> my girlfriend's <laughs> crying. You know. <laughs> Jesus Almighty! But anyway, we found the cat. I, I found the cat actually. Yeah, I just came out here, and the cat ran in front of me, and I went, "Well, I found her." <laughs> and, and then the cat went and hit, visiting you, hiding. What? Is this the cat that you was you were keeping when I was there visiting you and it was hiding? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah she, yes, you that. were here and she was hiding. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't know we were taking care of a cat. <laughs> Except yeah. for the evidence in your kitchen. The bowls. Yeah. Bowls and the cat food. So yeah, that was the one. Uh, but this time she decided she would sleep on the bed and wake us up at 4 30 in the morning. Really, you know. But I we love her. Strange. We do. So anyway, where is Vernon? Vernon, you're outdoors. You're in something. Are you in a boat? What is that? You're in a porch. Uh, on the balcony of the condo that we're staying in, and that's a golf course right behind my oh, head there. beautiful. Very oh, nice. nice. That's the 10th tee of the golf course at the, the resort. Oh. And this is a condo you go to once a year, right? Right. Usually and, in October. And how many, how many, how much time do you have there? We're starting our second week. So mm -hmm. we'll be heading back oh, on Saturday. Oh, nice. Oh, so it's you great. get two weeks. So this one condo is rented by 24 people, right? No, it's a single bedroom condo, but there's three buildings here. Each building has like 28 units in it. And most of, some of them are timeshares. Some of them are privately owned at summer timeshares. Yeah. And it's, but it's, it's out in the night, it's out in the country and stuff. And well, it's, it's not near any metropolitan area. The closest town of any size is called Mount Jackson. Okay. And uh, this is in what state is this in? This is our seventh time here. You mean, but what state is it in? Virginia, western mm -hmm. part. If you look over that ridge right there over my head, mm -hmm. yeah. that, mountain, that mountain over there is West Virginia. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're having a very nice time. Well, we had a really nice cool off that came through uh, this morning. So it went from 72 degrees for a high yesterday to 52 degrees today. Yeah. Oh, really? What's our temperature here? It's currently yeah, tomorrow night. It's supposed to get down to 29. Oh my God. I don't understand this weather. 55. Well, ours, ours is pretty good. 61 right now. Hmm. How's it up where you are? Uh, I'm 55. You're 55? 55. No, you're 87. Yeah, I know. That's, <laughs> it's you, lady. Uh, yeah. no, no, Jeff, I'm not going to say anything. I promise you. 
Okay. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. You're you you're a good person to keep a secret. <laughs> Alex, can I ask I know. Well, that? Uh, Jeff came over with his wife yesterday and we had our semi annual yes. lunch. And uh, it's always nice to see you, Jeff. Always. You, you, yeah. you it's are just a treat. Just an absolute treat. So, right. you know, um, and they brought her fl Mar Marjorie flowers because it's her birthday. Come on. Uh, when? On Friday? We're downplaying it. <laughs> it's on Your Friday. I missed your birthday, Marjorie. Oh, no, happy no, birthday. No, no, I'm down. Yeah. I'm down. It hasn't happened. But I'm not going to tell you. I'm just going to let it happen. I'm downplaying it. I do, I totally get that. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm right along with you, honey. Absolutely. Uh, you're just right behind me. Not this one, baby. No, no. <laughs> this is a big one. Uh, it's so a we're, big one. we're going to a very nice French restaurant, but uptown, not all the way downtown. Ooh. That would be nice. Yeah, we went there for his birthday last year. I took him. Well, you, have a very chic, you have a very chic haircut. Very, very nice. You know something? I think he did too much. He says no. No, no, no. no. He, says, he says to me, I, I, it's chic, really. Look at it. I said, no, it looks like an old lady's hair. <laughs> no, it does not. No, it does not. Any of the other women there have any? Any of the other women there have any opinion of it? No, here I am. It's very. I love Chris curls. I think your hair looks. No, what, what, I Mandy? don't like it. Mandy? I'm telling you, all you can say whatever you want, but I. By the way, if anybody's don't like just it. joining us, that's what this show's about. How's Marjorie's hair? The <laughs> good. Uh, <laughs> yes, Mandy. Well, I was going to say, I get the attitude that Marjorie has. I get that you you feel like it's your hair, and you want it the way you it's an important part of your body. Right, and they don't cut it the way you want it. It's like annoying, but I mean, I think it's very appealing. I think it's cute, and I but I understand if you want it to grow out some and everything. At least it will, but I think it is cute. You you can Thank carry. You. Thank you so much. That's, but you know, it's it, like, it makes you look like a cute old lady. Oh, I can't be a cute old lady. <laughs> I, I can't even fathom the thought. Colleen, what do you think of it? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I, it, it's nice, but I, I understand, too, when, when it's shorter than you want and it's not how you yeah. want it, you don't feel right until it gets right. So I was seeing him in three months, so it'll be six months. I, I just mean, love his curls. It, that it's just too short. What did what, 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 you say, Mike? I just love Marjorie's curls at any length. I just love your curly hair. Uh, there you go. There you I've go. had them my whole mm. life, but, of course, growing up, I wanted straight hair. Of course. <laughs> Remember yeah. it was the Page Boy flip flip. Remember Paula? Page uh, Boy flip. Did you straighten your hair when you were younger? You did. That's yeah. like that's like the movie The Way We Were, where she says, "I have it ironed." Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right. 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 But anyway, so anyway, here we are. It's uh, it's uh, Monday, uh, and I uh, I. Well, I didn't get any sleep much last night because I didn't take my pill that puts me to sleep. So he's <laughs> flopping all over the bed. And of course, and I they, can't Then sleep. there was the cat. There was the cat keeping me awake. And uh, you. And me. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask a question about the cat? <laughs> what about the cat? Have you tried the temptations test with the cat? I, I don't know that I've ever seen a cat when you buy a bag of temptations and you open that bag and you get a couple of them out that doesn't come running. Oh, this cat is on a specific diet. She's old and fat. <laughs> she's not so even... old and fat. You're making her sound ugly. No, she's not. She's, she's gorgeous, really quite adorable. Love, but she's old. She's old, like me. How old is she? She's seven years old. Well, but that's in, that's oh. in people years. In even cat in cat years, years, she wasn't as old as you are. <laughs> it's enough, Alex. <laughs> how old are you? In cat I think years? you could come upside his head today, Mar Marjorie. I'm sick. Marjorie, how old are you in cat years? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had a black cat cross my path today. But I say a little prayer for the next 24. It's good luck. <laughs> good luck. Don't listen to anyone. Black cats have got it good because they just. <laughs> Especially this time of the year. Yeah. Oh, I, my 
mother-in-law always insisted she would call 30 times on on halloween have you put smudge up have you put smudge up don't let her out don't let her out yeah. somebody yeah i i had a i had a black cat i had a black cat and um uh, all of a sudden he was gone right around halloween and some i put some signs out and some of the kids told me there's a busy street like a block away and he was on the other side at some family's house with all these kids so there's no way that he would have crossed that you know mm -hmm. so yeah and then they cut his whiskers oh, oh. That's oh the worst. He, kept, he kept getting stuck behind refrigerators no but whiskers are whiskers show them That's there yeah, yeah. It's their metric like, system. They, they get yeah. bearing as to how it, in other words the whiskers yeah. will always be as wide as the cat is so i guess if a cat gains weight it will the whiskers will also grow longer so and that's the way they judge whether they can get into something or not get into something. Yeah. Too bad. Does the cat sleep with you, Alex? The cat slept with us at the, like the foot. Of, like if if I was lying sideways in the crook of my, you know, yeah. legs or whatever. Yeah. I don't like that because the cats always start going for the feet later. Oh, well, I love it. I love that. I can't sleep. So How can you sleep? Yeah, oh, I can so you know, your feet. She didn't get under the covers, and it was only the last three nights that she actually got. No, but bed it's so it. wonderful. Even when I had dogs, it was great when they got under the bed. Well, I always had. I had one cat that would make you know, kind of burrow and go underneath and go to my feet and just sit there and a nice yeah. cold winter's yeah, night. Say, that's wonderful. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Every heart's desire, especially yeah. in New York. <laughs> yeah. But uh, anyway, so that, that's that, and so I'm um, I'm uh, I'm kind of out of it today, tired, as usual. Uh, yes, Paula. Yeah, I I'm, I mean I I've had uh, Siamese cats, or I, I love cats, and I know how attached you can get. I have friends who have uh, it's a new experience for me being brought up in the city. Uh, they have uh, horses, and chickens, and they talk. Uh, you know that that I I didn't know the horses had uh, um, distinct personalities, but they, oh, yeah, sure they do. And, and according to this person, so do the chickens. The chickens. <laughs> yeah, can I right. tell you something? This is a true story. Hey, now you gotta be pretty sick, to, you gotta be pretty sick to bond and with And the, the neighbor chicken. was the Deventis. And Gail was our age. And she got as a gift for Easter, three little chickens. Okay, but as, you know, as the chickens... They used to follow her down the street in the lawn. <laughs> I mean, it was so adorable. Wherever we went, they would just follow. But they grew up. In those days, we went to the movies on Saturday at 10 and it was over at 5. So your mother spent a quarter to get rid of you. <laughs> so, yes. home to a chicken dinner. <laughs> and her parents never told her. Yeah, well, you never, you never... <laughs> You never ever um, uh, give a name to anything that you might oh eat someday. Oh my God, Alex! Yeah. She she went into a heart. She it was horrible. You're making me kids. cry telling this story, <laughs> and it's only a damn chicken. <laughs> you know what I decided? It's, tell me, I'm crazy. I was going to sleep. You're last crazy. Night. <laughs> crazy, you please allow me to finish the story before you say I'm crazy. You <laughs> said please follow me orders. And... Yeah, I guess she did. I guess I did say that. Yeah. Anyway, so there. Uh, but uh, I was I was lying down last night. I was thinking about the cat, and I was thinking about pets, and I was thinking about the fact that we have pets, and we kind of treat them like slaves. <laughs> In other a words, cat, a cat, never, Alex. A cat will never be a slave. You're his you, slave. Well, you tend to think of them as yours, as your property. And I'm yeah, well, that, that's considering considering slavery and all the things that have gone down. Shouldn't we be a little more liberal when it comes to cats and dogs and pets? We are. They're totally in charge. I don't know if a dog's in charge. Cats are. You know. Oh, cats, uh, you know, it's the old story about you, you know, you, you own a dog and the cat owns you, you know. Yeah. I love cats. I love, my favorite cats are Siamese, Paula, you know. And I keep telling people because they've got the best dispositions, especially the males. Did you have a male? 
I had, I had uh, uh, they were always female and they were extremely mischievous. You know, they would go up on the mantle and then, and, and go. Yeah. You know? female, female Siamese. <laughs> Not over. You know? Female Siamese are a little more feral than males. Males become very bonding, but female Siamese yeah, they're have, bonding. have a tendency to be uh, a bit feral, you know, uh, it, it, but I love Siamese cats. They just have a great disposition, you know. I know all of you are looking at us because you're probably all dog people. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because yeah. we're in the index, Alex. Well, we as we said, we're not in the we're not I'm we're, we're not in the last chapter. We're I'm in not the in the last this isn't the last chapter of my life, it's the index. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so this coke is uh, coffee I made you drinking. Is two days old. Yeah. Is that disgusting? Normally it holds up pretty well. Yeah. It holds up. You warm it up and it tastes okay. You know. Is that what you're giving away to the kids tomorrow night? Two day old. <laughs> you know, we don't have is it tomorrow night is, is Halloween? Yeah. Did we buy any candy? We always buy no, candy. You know, always... For five years in a row, I put out a skeleton on the door, a little table dressed with stuff. And I had food and candy, and no one ever came up to well, our I always feel very food. sorry for you. So now for the last few years, they're doing it just, we have a courtyard. So they're doing it as a party, like from six to eight in the courtyard. So we don't have to be involved. <laughs> we don't have to go down. Well, they've never come to our door. Well, that's it. Never. Well, that's it. never. You, and you went out, you bought like two big things of candy. I mean... How much candy must rot this floor. time of year yeah. because people, kids, not enough kids come by. Mm. You know, if you live in a neighborhood, Brothers chances come. are they will come by. <laughs> but uh, I, have to say, I have to say that there's uh, stuff going on in neighborhoods. I live in a neighborhood that that I I did not grow up with at all. The the, the trend now is very very scary skeletons and 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 like big monsters and 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 really scary stuff and and you well, know we had that not yeah. not like this we had skeletons we had skeletons not like not i'm telling you not like this does anybody know what i'm talking about in your neighborhood yep i agree i saw yeah. or now they just you know you go and you do like what i did last night i went to the corn maze mm -hmm. and when i used to go to this corn maze back when my kids were younger it was just the corn maze it's funny what you call it a corn maze because maze is a word for corn the maze maze yeah <laughs> there you go so it's a maze maze i've been in business this one then my town has been in business for 15 years but when we went to it when my kids were younger it was just the maze and like a hayride now i mean there were so many people there on a sunday night I was like, isn't it a school night? Don't you people leave home and go to sleep? Um, but it was just crazy. They have all these things now. Just so pumpkin launchers. They have pumpkin launchers, those cannons that shoot out the pumpkins. Yeah, I mean, just everything. Just it what was can I possibly do to a pumpkin. <laughs> launch it like always. <laughs> oh, they even had a pit with in it. That you, I was like, well, there's a cesspool of germs. Like these yeah. kids were. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I can, I can identify with Paula because I mean, with our granddaughter, she's five this year. So last year she was four when we took her out trick or treating. And there was like a block of like four houses in a row in one neighborhood. And, and the thing is, some of it's scary, but also just the level of decoration. Like how many inflatables are there out there compared to what they're. You know, the, just you go to Costco and you see these big inflatables and it's so easy to dress up something now. A lot of uh, a lot of houses in the neighborhood we did last year had a lot, had that stuff going on. So and some of it gets pretty scary for a four year old. And it's like a competition. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. They put it up in September. Well, you know what, what gets me is we're coming up on Christmas, which my father used to have a term for it. He used to say Christmas is at our throats again. <laughs> <laughs> At Costco, Christmas started last month. <laughs> At Costco, yeah, yeah, right, yeah. absolutely. But uh, uh, the fact was that they, you know, um, uh, at Christmas time, there are these people 
who turn their houses into something. I just guess you could see it from the moon, right? And they put up all the lights and they put up all the stuff. And I had a girlfriend whose family did that. They were Mormons every year. I mean, they had a whole uh, garage that they didn't park the cars in because all the stuff for Christmas was in there. Mm -hmm. and you would spend like a half a month putting it all together. And then when they turn it on, you got blinded. I don't know why people do that. I have no idea. That's because you're Jewish, though. It's because I'm Jewish, yeah. Yeah, I don't understand Christmas, you know, so. You don't have an eight-year-old either. <laughs> well, well when, I, when I was a kid, my parents bought me Christmas presents. You got Christmas, you got Christmas and... Um, Hanukkah. Hanukkah. <laughs> Christmas and the other one. <laughs> well, here was my problem. My problem was my birthday was a week before Christmas. Oh, you were lost. You lost uh, that as a kid. You no, I life. didn't. No, I didn't. My parents you bought You're also me. an only child. They so said we buy, <laughs> buy you gifts for your birthday and we would buy you gifts for Christmas. So we're buying you gifts for both. Mm -hmm. They didn't say, here's one gift. It's for both. No, they didn't do that. I was spo spoiled. You were spoiled. Child. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Was you always, always go, only child, only child. Yeah, you're always mad at me because I was an only child. You're just jealous. You never <laughs> learned how I to I have share. all the toys to myself. <laughs> and I enjoyed every minute of it. <laughs> you never learned how to share. Right, Edward? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> is anybody else on this panel dressing up in the next 24 hours of anything? Is anybody here dressing up as anything at all? No, I'm the only one. What, what are you? you what are you going as? I've got a pretty good. I've got a pretty good Luke Skywalker costume from the Last Jedi. I've got a. Okay. It's, it's 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 pretty bang on. So I go out like that, and many times Alara will be dressed as Ray. So we're a good little. Mm. Two for Star Wars. Star well, Wars. Here, here is that you? Yeah, that was me Saturday night, and I'll dress up for that. <laughs> oh, oh. I cool. love a giant skeleton. Aren't you like six eight, Brian? That's perfect. Uh, was, yeah, six, six four. Yeah. And then uh, Adrian. So I'll take Adrian out uh, trick or treating, and it's going to be cold, so I'll wear that. It'll keep me warm. <laughs> it's worst nightmare. If you if you were part of the Karate Kid gang. Yeah, uh, Daniel said um, wouldn't have fared any better. That's a perfect Karate Kid costume, almost. So, oh yeah, that's right. Uh, last year, I had a clown outfit, and I had this crazy clown. Uh, uh, oh no, sorry, yeah, crazy clown. Um, a mask, and I had this big piece of wood. It's it's all made out of plastic, but a big piece of wood with like a saw blade, and it's all bloody. And so Adrian would go to the door. She would do a trick or treat, and then like when they're closing the door, they would see me on the street, and I would just be standing there, just like <laughs> great face. And like they would close the door, and you could see they saw me, and they like they like they slowed down and <laughs> like close the door. <laughs> That's what the world there. needs: gigantic, scary, six foot eight clown walking down. <laughs> we all want to see. By the way, uh, Race Malone on our little, uh, you know, um, what do you call it, chat, says, I'm going as a night manager in an adult, an adult bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> Circa 1974. What would that costume look like? I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, so anyway, so, you know. Um, um, Marjorie, uh, are you tired? You exhausted from the cat? I'm ready for. I mean, I'm glad you went home, but you know, we we said that. Well, can we I, are. Can I give everybody an update? EMS is responding to a report of a person experiencing <laughs> cardiac arrest. What well, cardiac arrest? Oh. Adam Clayton Powell. I got rid of that thing. It was, just, <laughs> it was too depressing. It, it's this thing called Citizen. And it'll tell you all the horrible things that are happening in your neighborhood. Not There's a guy just... wielding a knife on 115th Street. <laughs> <laughs> and then you realize it was you. Uh, <laughs> you know. What do you guys think about Matthew Perry? Uh, he's too young. He was just young. 
he, he, he looked bad in the last few years, for sure. I don't know what his demons were. His demons were drugs. Alcohol and drugs. Alcohol and drugs. Yeah, yeah I, I don't think he drowned. I, I have a feeling he had some type of an event and, you know, went under the water or something. I don't know. Yeah. I, I think he uh, said I goodbye. Was, I, I, what? Yeah, I, I think he said goodbye. And, and Yeah. Yeah. Well, I um, uh, I was never a big uh, fan of Friends. I hardly ever watched it. Yeah. I can't. I can't tell you if I've watched a single episode of Fred. I've never watched it. Yeah. Me either. But I know who he was, and I liked another show that he did that I turned Marjorie on to last night called Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip, yeah. which was uh, done by Aaron Sorkin. That's one of my favorite shows of all time. I love that. Very good show. Yeah. yeah we'll it, watch it, it only lasted one season because nobody watched it. What year was it, Alex? What year did I watched it. I forget now. It was I think it was o two o or o three o four? I think actually yeah. it might have been a little later than that. It might have been o six o seven. But yeah. yeah, it was fantastic. The cold open to that with Judd Hirsch is mm -hmm. one of the greatest cold opens to any series ever. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a terrific, it's a terrific show. Uh, so I liked him on that, you know. So I knew him more from that than I knew him from Friends. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, can I say something? It, it, yeah, of course, you're my wife. If I don't let you, I'm in trouble. Mike, what's a call over? What? What's that? What's a call over? Um, no, cold, cold open? opening. Oh, cold cold opening. opening. I explained to you a cold open yesterday. Well, Mike, that's where me. you don't play the theme yet. You do a right, cold right, right, right. open, and then you, yeah. then the open comes after that. Right. The opening Sorry. to that series was was Judd Hirsch uh, played like a um, like a Lauren Michaels type character who was tired though and running the show forever. And the network censors came in and and uh, told him what he couldn't do for the show. And so he went in front of the cameras live in front of everybody and basically did a tirade. It was kind of like network. Um, uh -huh. He did a tirade against the uh, the network that ran his show, and he immediately got he was fired before the show even. Uh, you know, concluded, but it was just you, such a. You know something though, I, I found that what was strange is that he also did that same opening to another show. Uh, yeah, to the newsroom. Newsroom, same thing. Newsroom. Which, I, which I, the, I've seen that. In which yeah. the lead character gives his tirade against television. Yeah. And the, and in this case, Judd Hirsch did the same thing. Probably Aaron Sorkin said to himself, "Nobody watched the other show, so I may as well recite." Yeah, this, this will float yeah. by. I'm a big Aaron Sorkin fan, and he constantly recycles much of his vocabulary and his ideas in his yeah. shows because they work. Yeah, yeah. no, uh, in Newsroom, it was um, uh, Jeff Daniels giving a tirade against America, why America isn't the greatest country in the world. And it is right. a very compelling speech written only speech. by someone that, like Aaron Sorkin, who's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah. His phenomenal. writing is great. Yeah. yeah. But he, he also, I know, do you notice there's a commonality in every series he does? That they're all about an extended family, the family you have at work, sports night, newsroom, yeah. West Wing. Yeah, West Wing's so good. It's comfort food for me. I love oh, that show. Yeah, sure. I got as far as season four, I think, and then he stopped writing them, and I just didn't care. Oh, it was great. <laughs> yeah. Season five is hard to stomach on that one, but season seven and eight started to get better again a little mm -hmm. bit. John Bell's found a found a rhythm but after season four season five was well, really here, here was the problem here was the problem there in sorkin i mean he had a real drug problem but the reason he had a real drug problem he wrote every episode of the west wing mm -hmm. and what if he didn't write the episode somebody wrote it with him sure. you know but i mean it, it it's most people if they start a series only write the first episode and then they don't do anything else after that mm -hmm. you know um, but no, Sarkin is very good, very good. You know the one Candy and I went through last week. We yeah. uh, we hadn't watched it yet. We went we went through all of Only Murders in the Building, mm -hmm. and uh, boy, was that a, what a love letter to New York and what a great show that is. 
Yeah, I watched it for two years, but then it was just more the same. Well, that building is a, I, I found out, is actually a sister building of ours. Not a sister, well. it's a cousin, Alex. <laughs> nope. <laughs> the Arcona? It's no, true. The Arcona is, well, it it is, uh, it's actually, the sister building to our building is called the uh, Anthorpe. On oh, 90th and Broadway. Yeah, it was built after ours. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it turns out they, the uh, the one they use in that show, uh, which is, I forget the name of only it. Only Murders in the Building. Yeah, but th that building is very much similar to our building in its construction. You know, it has a well, courtyard it's and everything. done around the same time. Yeah. But it wasn't the same architect. Yeah. Yeah. When Marjorie said you had a courtroom, the or a courtyard, I should say, the, the, the first thing I thought of was the courtyard that's in that show. Like, is it similar? Yeah. Oh, that's yes. so cool. Oh, yeah. Well, if you want to see our courtyard, if you want to see our apartment building on a series, go watch Mozart in the, in the Jungle. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, it, it plays prominently in cool. the show. What did they call it? What they call the building? I don't think they had a name for the building. I thought, I thought they did. No, but then also, if you want to see it at its ugliest, uh, there's always New Jack City. Yeah. Where, we're the we're the Carter, we're the the oh. building they move it into, and there's no kidding. There's well, there's a scene where he's well, holding. This, a, well, let me explain. Let me explain it because you're going to screw it up. I love that. <laughs> uh, um, uh, there is a uh, what's his name Denzel, not Denzel. Who's the other actor I'm thinking of that was in that film? Um, but what, anyway, nice. Mario Van Peebles, Ice T. Uh, Wesley Snipes. Wesley, uh, Wesley Snipes. Snipes. Wesley yeah, Snipes. Snipes. He is the drug dealer, and he's talking to all his people, and he has a map of our building. Mm. And he says, and this is where we're going to build the crack lab. <laughs> and it's our kitchen. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that building was prominent. In, in fact, I, I sometimes will take a cab home or something, and as the car pulls up to the front of my apartment building, they go, oh, the Carter. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's actually called the Graham Court. but they, Yeah, but they all say that. The Carter building. Yeah, the Carter. Yeah. That's in the uh, Only Murders in the Building, um, they go to a, a, there's a place called the Pickle Diner. Yeah. And it's actually a diner called the Mansion, which is on the Upper East Side. Stephen Laurie Weiner took me there. Uh, last time I was in New York, and you can go—it's—it's it's super cool seeing that diner in that show as well. <laughs> well, if you watch any shows about New York, you see a lot of New York, you know. Uh, and and uh, uh, the only thing that ever bothers me about a lot of shows where they do them in a city is that they don't necessarily shoot the city as the city is. Like you right. would do a show in San Francisco, yeah. somebody or a movie. I remember one movie. I'm trying to remember the name of the picture. Uh, something with Kevin Bacon, I think. And uh, he goes down. He goes down the street, turns a block, and is in New York City. Yeah, you know. And he just, he just don't Magic. want to buy that. You know, not about your town. Okay. Mm -hmm. Turn it. I I like movies where I've seen a movie like uh, in in uh, you know of San, about San Francisco. Uh, and uh, Vertigo is a pretty good example of that, where when they turn a block, the street they're turning onto is a street they logically would have turned onto. Uh, but a lot of films don't do that, and I get really no. the Star Trek movie with the whales or whatever that they did in San Francisco. That is just they're all over the place. They're saying they're in Marin, but they're at the Monterey Aquarium. And right. yeah. but you know the worst thing about that movie? Think about it <laughs> for a second. Shatner. <laughs> well. Always, uh, <laughs> but uh, think about it for a second. You've got the chance now to go back into the past <laughs> and change something, and you go back to s save a bunch of whales. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't you go back and maybe kill Hitler? You know, I mean, come <laughs> on. There are more important things to do than save a whale. The galaxy depended on it, Alex. Those whales were necessary to talk to the alien entity. I mean, come right. on. Oh, God. Mm. I just thought the computer could simulate that 
that that noise uh, a lot easier. But you know, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> was the French was the French Connection that was filmed in in New York, wasn't it? New York, I it. yeah, yeah. I like watching the old uh, Dirty Harry yeah. movies in San Francisco. That's always cool too. And they that those those pretty well played out okay i mean in the first dirty harry they go out to marin, marin county yeah. or, and they go to a place which was a brick uh kiln yeah and uh it, it ends there and i used to go out to that brick kiln for dinner because they turned it into a restaurant oh yeah. they dug okay. out the, the kiln and made the restaurant the inside of the kiln a buddy of mine i used to work with at kaiser um was one of the kids on the bus at the end of that movie. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. You wait long enough in San Francisco, you'll be in a movie eventually. Yeah. We, we're, I was taking some friends around, some someone who's, who was visiting, and I went down um, down in Barcadero, one area, and, and something somewhere, some other area near, yeah, near the marina. And when we looked, we saw all these big trucks, all those, you know, the, the movie trucks. Mm-hmm. And we looked up the street, and there was a bus, and the bus was like jacked up, and it was up against a tree, and all this stuff. And it, it, An ended, and we saw Marvel on all the trucks. Yeah. And then uh, yeah, <laughs> later we watched the movie, saw the movie, and then I saw them on the bus going down the streets, like, oh, he's gonna cross right here. <laughs> sure enough, they crashed in the thing, but it was pretty cool to see how it was like propped up and like mm-hmm. split in half. I think it was split in half or something like that. But it was like. Cool to see it when it came out in the movie. Well, my uh, my my great time in San Francisco was when I was a kid in seeing a movie being made. Is I w- I lived on Telegraph Hill and I went down over the side of Telegraph Hill down a little bit uh, to where you know there's a whole all those places where there are houses and things like that, but there's no dro- no way you can drive to them. Uh, but mm. anyway, there was this big beautiful Art Deco building. And it was used in a film called A Dark Passage with Humphrey Bogart and uh, Lauren Bacall. Wow. And I looked down and I saw them shooting a scene outside. I don't know. If, I, I think it was, had to have been. If it wasn't um, Bogart, then it was some stand-ins. Because, uh, you know, a lot of times they did the, all the indoor scenes in San Francisco. Mm-hmm. But but he did go into this building and stuff, and I saw them making that movie. You know, um, boy, who do we lose now? Charlie. Charlie. Charlie? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Normally he doesn't. Must have been something you said. <laughs> <laughs> it's always something I said. You know. Where's Charlie? Charlie? He just uh, we lost him. Yeah, Charlie just he disappeared, but he may come back. It could be that he's yeah. just you know got a problem he didn't want to say anything. Glenn, how's everything with you you're a little quiet today <laughs> yeah good you know just Heard uh, that, Jeff. <laughs> went to go take my car in for service this morning very exciting <laughs> <you know>. <laughs> see that's the essence of this show by the way I, I car. <laughs> right. yeah hey, hey len you need a ride back to the dealership when i'm coming through your city i can drop you off if you need a ride well, you me... keep saying you're going to stop by for a cocktail and i never see it so you know what <laughs> <laughs> I my daughter after i'd be drunk <laughs> usually when i do my show the nighttime show there are a lot of people from San, it's basically bay area people mm-hmm. a lot of them here is like one bay area person that's about yeah, three, yeah. three. oh, oh three? Okay. charlene too yeah, I three of us that's three of us right there yeah. yeah we're gonna get together and have uh have drinks see that <laughs> i hate that because i can't join you but jeff and i and don't say you uh, can't marjorie don't say you can't you know, you know what I came up on my uh, my memories today it was exactly a year ago. There I am sitting there and. Oh, <laughs> oh yes, there you go. absolutely. Yeah. I look much younger. Do I look younger there? Oh yeah, a lot. Yeah, absolutely. I look younger there. Let me zoom in on it. There you go. I don't know. Eh, about the same. <laughs> You're younger there. What was that here? Was that here? You look a year yeah. younger. Yeah. Yeah. That was exactly what, a year Don't ago. you remember yeah. when he came to have lunch with us? I remember. I didn't realize it was a year. I know. Oh, so, yeah. Here's somebody who might come to see us, Alex. Who? who? Our <laughs> friend from Georgia. Yeah. 
Aren't you coming to New York again? Not anytime soon. Oh, really? <laughs> no. You didn't like it? Don't you <laughs> say that. Oh. I'm gonna go spring. I'm not gonna wait as long to go visit, but she'll be back for Christmas to come here. Yeah. So I'm sure she'll be back in town here. Yeah, yeah she's coming home for Christmas. Yeah. How does she like the city? Oh, she loves it. Is she has she fallen in love with it yet, or she just likes it? Oh, I mean, I don't. I mean, I don't know if a twenty twenty three year old would use that term, but I mean, she's definitely. Oh right. yes, yes, yes. That's exactly when they use that term. Is the falling in love of New York that you just? I, I don't I, think it happen. I it happens anymore. I thought she was going to. She's yeah. She. I guess you could say she does love it. Yeah, you can't yeah. not. Yeah, yes. especially if it's your first time. Mike, my wife and I are so in love with your city. Like, like I say, just even watching Only Murders, and we were jonesing to go back so badly. I just, I love it. I know. I think the city kind of sucks now. <laughs> no, really, I'm serious. I mean, I if, if it's a very New York point of view. I mean, you know that's a that's <laughs> <me>. <laughs> if it the, we yeah, want, New York. If, if it weren't the, we don't want to irritate the crap out of our landlord. Uh, we uh, I I uh, try to convince her to move out, you know. And I'm a typical mother, you know. I'm just texting her, going, "Wow, I saw this protest in Grand Central," and she's like, "Yeah, I know. I had to take a different train. They, you know, they didn't let us get on." And I'm like, "Stay safe." She's like, "I will." Yeah, yeah. I'm just a hard time because you're looking at her as a mother. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, this place is this town's much I I think much safer since Trump left. <laughs> he hasn't left yeah. yet. I will say since I went there, it made I was not worried about her, but when I went there, it made me feel even better just to see how she functions. Yeah. You know, oh, she's got this. Like, and then to hear the horrible story about Portugal when she went there, just don't even get me started. But I mean, I, got, I used to say about New York that everybody has this great fear that if you come to New York, you get off the airplane and you immediately get mugged. And I had to tell people it's ridiculous. You have to wait yeah. to get into the city first. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have enough money. <laughs> I was walking enough. around myself and I didn't feel unsafe at all. I didn't feel unsafe either when I was there. I don't feel good. unsafe either, but I never go out either. So <laughs> I just think wait, 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 Mike Chisholm was drunk at night walking the streets, calling him <laughs> up the night. <laughs> We kept thinking you were going to get mugged. We yeah, had money we, out. We were worried about you that night when you were doing, you were doing, the, you were calling the late show. The, yeah. Um, and, and you well, had your phone on as you walked down the street and we're going, oh boy, he's going to get <laughs> a second now. Where are you? I'm in, I'm, I'm in, uh, uh, and they named the neighborhood and we go, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I walked all the way from uh, on the Upper West Side, 108 is where, where, uh, where I was, Steve O'Donnell filled me with wine, and I literally walked all the way down from 108 to uh, to Times Square, just past Times Square. So that's what 40 blocks. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, but I had you guys to keep me safe. You guys had my back. That's all right. When my when my son first came to the city to to work there, mm -hmm. right out of college, he gets a cheap job. Uh, working in a bar, okay, and he would get money, cash, from people, and he decided that he somebody stopped him and wanted his money. Typical thing. So he f ultimately put all of his money in his shoes. Yeah. So any of you want to go to New York real night? <laughs> Four o'clock in the morning or whatever. <laughs> Put everything in your shoes. Yeah, they tell you to carry a fake wallet, a fake wallet with ten bucks in it or something, and, and they right. hand that over. <laughs> well, yeah. here's here's the thing: if you're if you're walking down the street, say, and somebody, for instance, steals your purse, okay, Marjorie, yeah, um, <laughs> just run after them. The right. yeah. They'll yeah. drop it. No, they will drop it, but they will have already gotten the money out. <laughs> but you have to have your purse with your license and everything else in it, you know. So uh, I, I had a girlfriend. Uh, we went to uh, we went to Barcelona together, and that town is famous for purse snatching. 
Mm. And she's walking down the street and uh, some guy grabs at her purse, grabs it and starts running. She she's a strong woman. She chased that guy down and <laughs> jumped him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but she he, eventually he dropped the purse and had the money and she, she just gave up. But that's what you should do. It's not unsafe to chase them. They don't want to get caught. So the best way to not get caught is to throw your whatever, your wallet or whatever it is down on the ground. But by that time, they've got everything they want out of it anyway. So. Well, you have a cane now, so you can hit them with your cane. You can hit them with your cane. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, so, but uh, let me see here. What else is new? Uh, not, not a hell of a lot new. I mean, we can go into politics, but I don't want to do that. We were talking about Matthew Perry earlier. My friend put this up, and it just absolutely gutted me. Oh. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. What's that? That's a that's Joey, Matt's best friend on 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 Friends, oh. and he's looking, looking at, his at the recliner. empty chair. Yeah. Looking at the empty chair. Uh. Yeah. Everybody seemed to like Matthew Perry. Yeah. Well, he was the best character. Uh, huh? uh, that was, he was my favorite. Him and Monica, uh, Courtney yeah. Cox. Mm. Mine too. Yeah. Uh, it, no, it, it's, um, I, I, everybody who talks about him just says, nice. I liked him, you know, as a character and whatever. I just, I never watched friends. So I, I had no real feeling for either. him until I saw him on studio 60 on the sunset. Mm -hmm. Strip. And then I said, Oh, he's good. You know, he's yeah. perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, if you ever get a chance to see that show, although it's not really readily available. No, you gotta you gotta search to find that one. <laughs> I found all twenty two episodes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's it's a good show. I mean, you like it, don't you, Marjorie? What I've shown but, you, it's, it's Studio sixty on the Sunset Strip. Yeah, yeah, very much. His writing is so good. Yeah, it is terrific. It is it's terrific. that show came out the same year that Thirty Rock did, and on the same network. You know, you're right. Yeah, there was a confusion. Two shows about the same thing that were completely different, but it's almost like there wasn't. They were about the same thing. One was about hosting, doing a comedy show, um, um, like Saturday Night Live, and the other show was about exactly the same thing. But one was a serious show, and the other one was a comedy show. Yeah, and I think it, 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 it Sunset Strip died. I don't know if there was anything opposite it, but it just didn't do as well as 30 Rock was doing. Yeah. And so therefore <laughs> lost by just being too similar to the other show. It, yeah. Strange. Uh, I, I just remember that now that you mentioned it. Yeah. Hey, Jeff. But wasn't one of them uh, a uh, LA location yeah. and the other one yeah. was a different location? Yeah, Sunset Strip. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Thirty Rock literally took place in, uh, in Thirty Rockefeller Center, but it wasn't Saturday Night Live. And then Sunset Strip was a a fictitious network that was competing sure. against the other networks, but it took place, uh, on literally on the Sunset Strip in L.A. And it was a fictitious show that would be competition for Saturday Night Live. Well, it was a show that was on the edge of being canceled. That's how it starts out, and you know, yeah, these guys that are brought in to save it one of which is Matthew Perry, and the other one is, what's his name, from uh, West Wing? Uh, Bradley Whitford. Bradley Whitford, yeah. Uh, and a great cast. I mean, uh, all the actors and actresses on that show, yeah. incredible. Um, and in fact, it's a, a show that uh, one of the people appeared on it early on, and then got he got a better job, was the guy who was on, uh, um, what do you call it, uh, Big Bang Theory. Um uh, Playing. Oh yeah, yeah. Adam Horowitz, uh, not Adam. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I know you. you yeah, I, I want to say it's Adam Horowitz, not Adam Horowitz, though. It's uh, no. yeah. yeah. I forget his name, but yeah, he was good. Yeah, but he played what on 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 um, um what? My mind is blank now. Mm. On uh <laughs> on uh, Big Bang Theory, who did he play? He played. Uh, what character? There's Penny. There's Leonard. There's and Raj. There's and the <laughs> Raj's other one. Best friend. Raj's best friend. Why can't I think of it either? Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, yeah. 
And then he wound up in that picture with uh, Meryl Streep playing the pianist to Florence Foster Jenkins. Did anybody ever see that film? Florence Foster Jenkins? Well, I, what, I did. Huh? What was the name of it? Florence Foster Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> was the name of the movie? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was all about this woman. And I knew about her because I had her album when I was a kid because it was the thing to have. And it was this woman who sang opera and she had a lot of money and gave a lot of money to the opera. So she would hold little concerts at home and people would come to her home and hear her and uh, and just pretend like they liked what she was doing. But she could, she had a tin ear. She couldn't. She just she was the world's worst opera singer. Okay. Uh, and but people kept uh, I, saying nice things about her. Oh, she's so terrific! And then every now and then she'd hold a concert at Carnegie Hall. She ran out of Carnegie Hall. I don't know if you know that the Carnegie Hall really you don't work your way up to Carnegie Hall. You get enough money to buy it out, you know. And um, she uh, she would hold these concerts every year, and everybody in New York would show up, and they wouldn't laugh at her. But they would sit there and go, isn't she horrible? Isn't she the worst? <laughs> and uh, so he played her pianist, who was named on the album. On the albums, the name was, and in the movie, the same name, Cosmo McMoon. <laughs> How do I remember that? I can't remember Marjorie's name. <laughs> but I can remember Cosmo McMoon. Okay, so that movie, Florence Foster Jenkins. Mm -hmm. Uh, Simon Helberg is yes. the actor, yes. and he played Howard on The Big Bang Theory. So there we he go. Also, he also, prior to the, right uh, at the same time, he played uh, a, ra a rabbi in A Serious Man. Wow. Well, the Coen Brothers film. Yeah. 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 He's done a lot of stuff. He's really very good. And also, in Florence Foster Jenkins, he plays her accompanist, and he actually did his own piano play. So, I mean, it was, and I like the movie. I think it's a, it's, it's a lovely story, you know. I'm waiting to buy y'all. I oh. got to cut it. Oh, you, yeah, yeah. You're cutting out early now. You got three minutes. I'm going it. to that class I like. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, go, right, go, right. go, 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 okay. go. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. Go, to her special. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> you got she, told, she got mad at me for coming in late because she says, oh, Brian wants everybody to say hi to him. <laughs> Good one, Brian. Good. Bye. 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 See y'all next Cheer. week. Bye. Uh, yeah. Gee, by the Glad end of the show, gone. it would just be Marjorie and I at this point. <laughs> oh, you're supposed to say your line. Glad she's gone. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, so you know, uh, uh, we have about two minutes left here. It's uh, it's it, it, times are weird, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it just I just wish we'd have one year worth everything went right. Yeah, none of them went wrong. And when was the last time there was a year that it went right, Alex? Pick a year. I think it was okay sometime where. Like, was there an Obama year where everything was no, okay? They, sometime in the 1800s, I think. <laughs> <laughs> if I remember correctly. Yeah. Did you hear that uh, GM has a tentative agreement with the United Oil Workers? And yeah. uh, Ford and Stellaris have also settled. Yeah. yeah. And have you heard about my union? Yeah. Still nothing. Nothing. Everybody is so pissed at our president. Yeah, uh, because they just feel she's gone too long without really coming to the table seriously. Because they they had a they had a um uh, um uh, what do you call it a a, 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 a a what do you call it an agreement an agreement and then she went back on it. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just it's terrible. That that's Fran Drescher, right? Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine? Can you imagine her married to Edward Berger? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I mean, it's it's, it's, ter it's terrible because, you know, most of the 90 percent of the people in our union don't even work much. Right. You know? And they can use any opportunity to work that's possible out there. And letting it go this long without yeah. settling it is unconscionable. Yeah. And it's, it's not you can't say it's just the uh, 
you know, the producer's fault and stuff because it isn't. It's hers as well. The amount of money they're losing, they could have, you know, just given it to them and gotten been done with it. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, 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 George Clooney and a couple of other actors agreed to pay more than their fair share of dues, like $120 million in dues. Wow. And save the union and let them let everybody else go back to work. Wow. So, you know, it's, yeah. uh, it, well, it's the way it is. But anyway, eventually uh, you'll get your TV shows back in about another 10 years. Yeah. Until then, it's going to be all... Uh... By that time, it'll be all podcasts. Yeah. Yes, right, right. Hey, mm -hmm. thank you so very much, Charlene, for being here today. Always a nice thing on your part. Also, great thanks to Mike Chisholm. Good seeing you again. Paul Levin from Ohio. We enjoy having you here, and we also enjoy it when you come out. In fact, if you come out to stay with us, we know you're the one guest we will have this year that doesn't hide under the bed. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Len LaFrisco. Always good to see you. Jeffrey Stein, you give my best to Pamela. We enjoyed seeing you yesterday. We should do yeah, it. Great to happen. Marjorie Miller, it was good seeing you yesterday, too. Uh, uh, Vernon, Mark, <laughs> thank you. And Brian Neary, uh, give my best to Adrian as she goes out and gets a stomach ache from all the candy she can eat after doing the little thing that you're going to do with her. Uh, and, and dressed as a seven-foot-tall skeleton. <laughs> Finally, saying goodbye to all of us and signing us off is Edward Berger, who signs off by saying, That's all, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, bye-bye. Thanks, Alex. <laughs>